Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to finish up Lanley Kerman's mission to Minmus, well, rescuing him from orbit of Minmus and from the surface, and hopefully bring Lanley back to Kerbin safely as well as Val. And then we'll move on to other things. As far as the comm issue I had before in the previous video, uh, somebody suggested, I think it was Arthur E. King, who suggested that I should make the probe core the root part, I believe it was. And I had double checked that, I think I cut that out of the video, but I had made the probe core the root part at some point in order to see if that would work, and that didn't. So I probably just cut that out because it wasn't a functional thing. So we'll just have to figure it out as we go along. I'll try some other things. I mean, who knows, it might not recur again at all. So we'll find out. Anyway, so Lanley Kerman has the science and the rock, uh, the green sandstone, in theory, somewhere around here. Uh, but this is a big menu, and uh, Lanley's inventory? Well, it's not in the inventory, because that's KIS, and this is a whole different thing. So, yeah, I'll suppose that we have it. Uh, we certainly picked it up and we should go. So what we need to do is rendezvous with our return stage and that is that part. So that's already our target. There is no more nitrogen left so it's gonna be really uncomfortable. Okay well here we go. Plenty of Delta V and all. This could be reused, but we'll just uh, do the safe thing and use its fuel for the return just in case we don't have enough in the other stage. So I expect that we do have enough in the other stage for the return. Especially since we've used up the fuel in here, or used up a lot of the fuel in here. Well, we're a little bit too early. Okay, uh, we can do that one over there. Again, Delta V is not a problem, so we'll try that. Oh, our inclination's way off, actually. Huh, I thought we had pointed to the target a bit. Um, well, we need to go more north. We'll figure it out eventually. And we actually have to dock this time. This should also be a functional pod for the moon, and that's one reason why it has so much delta V. We might need a little bit more for the moon though. Up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, violent magnetism, okay. No more nitrogen, yeah, we sort of knew that. Okay. Well. Landly so far, only 1% stress and 0% radiation. So, you know, look on the bright side. Maybe the little bit of shielding that we put on the pod actually worked. Okay, so, and we want to control from here. We want to shut off the lander's engines. Plenty of ignitions left there. If we want to reuse the lander, we can. And so this has to transfer us back and then get us into orbit. It seems like it thinks we have a lot of Delta V. So we're going to try and make our way back. Inclination is important to us, but we're pretty flat here. It looks okay. I mean, we could correct it and all. Maybe we should do it right now. It looks like it's sort of basically at the node. 7.2. Well, maybe we'd like the descending node to just be there instead. We'll correct it here instead then. It'll be cheaper. So we can sort of get a direct encounter there right when we get there, but we'll have a relative speed of 1575 and that's what we need to deal with. The first maneuver is 252 and then we have a adjustment of 97 to fix the inclination. And that is what we'll try to do, and I don't know if we're going to be able to do it or not. Okay, let us see. I feel like our comm problems might have been related to upgrading the 
VAB and Launchpad. Well, the VAB in particular. I don't know why, but it's just coincidence that right when we did that, it seems like the Space Center itself no longer gives us comms. So... Maybe I should try changing location and then changing back on the map. Or, you know, changing launch sites. I don't know. Anyway, go. Uh, well, that's a bizarre sort of plume going on there. Well, it works. But why, why do we have, like, a void here and then some stuff going on all the way out there? Everything's weird. We're gonna proceed on the assumption that it being weird is not gonna be a problem. We could have done EVA reports, we could do a whole bunch of stuff, but for now, we're gonna keep it to getting money. <laughs> so, this is the money part. And we'll get the sandstone and everything too. 42% radiation suddenly. When did that happen? Must have been some sort of solar storm or something? That's weird. We haven't even passed through the radiation belts or anything. Well, supply-wise, we seem to be okay. Not only Kerman's being exposed to intense radiation, it says. 66, 67. Why? I added the shielding. Why is Lanley getting more than... Okay, where, where's our... B. Let's let's show our belts. We're not in any belt. Is are we in a solar storm? Did we get a Okay, solar storm in progress. Duration fifty four minutes. Okay, six point five rads per hour. Um I don't think our tiny little bit of shielding is gonna... I don't know if any shielding is gonna help anybody survive that sort of thing. I, mean, I don't know. Symptoms of radiation poisoning. Well, it's it should be done by now. But Lanley's got 80% radiation and 4% stress though. Lanley's a cool customer. Lanley Kerman died after being exposed to extreme radiation. No. Great. Oh, great. I even put shielding. <laughs> A lot of good that did. Oh, the the radiation belts wobble. That's fancy. Let's turn those off for now, though. Not like anybody on here is going to have any problems with that. Hmm. So, I don't know if we're even going to be able to protect them from radiation with a whole bunch of shielding. We're at 20% shielding right now. Eh, it's probably a lost cause to try and... Get the encounter immediately, though. Okay, let us do this maneuver while we can. Right now we've got a negative periapsis, so it would probably be good to... Or, I don't know if that's with or without the maneuver. Well, it better be without the maneuver. Just fix this. Val can still get the science in theory, I suppose. I don't know if she has to, like... Deal with the corpse of Lanley, the irradiated corpse of Lanley, in order to get the green sandstone. He, he's clutching it. Very grisly. It's a hollow. It's a Halloween thing. It is a Halloween episode of JNSQ. There's a lot of comm lines. We're communicating through gamma here somehow. And Okay, fine. We should start now. <laughs> it's... It's time. Alright, that's us. Looking proper. Well, it's a shame about Landley. Oh, 
Something just happened. Oh, engine malfunction. That's the... I don't know which engine just malfunctioned. It seemed to have shut off all four ants. Yep, well, that's within some kilometers. Most importantly, we have a safe orbit. Okay, what happened here? This one had a malfunction. But I guess it... Uh, I guess the others were still firing and... We just, uh... Let me see. No, it doesn't show the burn time on that one anymore. We just compensated by gimbling or having the reaction wheel compensate. So, we lost one ant, I think is the idea, but it's not showing the others active. Yeah, it's a weird thing that they don't show the others active here. We seem to have the advertised Delta V. We seem to have a lot more Delta V than we really needed. Now, are we gonna have comms when we need to rendezvous? I mean, it's tough because there's a space center and we know being anywhere near a space center is not a good time for comms. How does that work? I don't know. See, it make great sense if, you know, it was the probe core versus crew cabin issue if we never got comms, right? But we sometimes get comms, it's just that we can't get comms through the space center for some reason. And we're still not gonna get comms. Well, there is an alternate way of dealing with this. We can jump to Val's ship and Val can do it. Val should have enough Delta V for this. I don't know if she's lost her mind yet or not, but... It was always my intention to be able to do this. So, okay, turn on SAS, please. And we should ignite some engines. Gosh, we're late. We're late. Slow down. Okay. Well, we could back off of that a little bit. Does that not have RCS? Oh, we didn't put RCS on this pod, we only put it on the other pod. Well, that was genius. But, you know. We could probably solve that problem by just having Val EVA. We probably don't need to dock or anything. Now, does that have any sign of... Nope, no sign of control here. So Val will have to rendezvous and try and get in, grab the stuff, and return herself at least and hopefully have some green sandstone okay well who knows how many EVAs Val can do here um, we could probably depressurize and everything but we're not gonna be hanging out for so long that's gonna matter okay we are parked and how is Val doing anyway 50% uh, stress though 0% radiation which is nice okay well, let's see what happens. She doesn't seem that stressed, but it could be a very forced smile. A crazy forced smile. Yeah, I don't know whether the green sandstone was actually on Lanley, and when Lanley disappeared, as it were, it no longer exists, or whether we can still pick it up. Board? Okay, well, Valentina can board, but we, we just really want Valentina to hang out here, um, take data. I don't know if she's got... That thing is moving pretty fast compared to us. Mm, I don't know if we can review data. We got the surface sample. But I don't feel like we have any way of telling whether we have... I don't think we have the green sandstone. Well, shoot. Anyway, our pod was moving, like, really fast just now. Yeah, it's, it's going away. We better just get to it.
Queen Sandstone is the only thing that we had left here. I don't know why... I guess... Yeah, I don't know why our other ship decided to move so fast. Is it because of the pressurization causing propulsion? I don't know. Because we left it pressurized and it opened the hatch. Okay, none of data transferred from Val to mission ship. Well, I don't know what to think about that. So, yeah. And I don't know if there's anything left on here, like uh, sandstone. Maybe, maybe Lanley hid the sandstone in the pod out of spite or something. Solar storm in progress again. Jeez. Hmm. Yeah. We'll review the whole solar storm thing in the VAB and see how detrimental they really are. Let's just try and bring Val back for now. Try 30. I don't know if we need to bring it down any more than that. I think on our accidental test of the system, we were higher up anyway. Okay, well, let us make sure the parachute's all in order. Now, pre-arm it. Make sure the pod has all available food, water, and oxygen. Oh, we can't transfer anyway. Another thing that we would like to do... I mean, if we enable crossfeed here, can we transfer? Nope. Ooh, that was forceful. That made me worry that the whole thing was going to come apart. Okay, SAS does not need to be... Why would SAS be disengaged? So we used half of our nitrogen in order to EVA. 300 units. Okay, well, some minor overheating so far. Location-wise, we're perhaps a little bit further along than I wanted to be. We're passing the Space Center. Okay, we are down to regular Kerbin speeds now, 32 kilometers, and the uh, fix are dying down. And uh, ever-present little ice flows. No comms though, you'll notice. We still have no comms over here. I mean, we have a Kerbal in, so, you know, bizarre thing. So like a lot of our ground sites just aren't working basically. Okay, so just the one parachute gets us to 6 meters per second as it is. This is a bigger pod than the Hermes and everything and last time I put radial parachutes but it doesn't seem like we need them. Well, Lanley got all the radiation and Valentina got none of it. Valentina got all the stress and Lanley didn't get any of that. Okay, recover before it sinks. <laughs> I am not up for having the demise of Val today. Okay, we got a surface sample. But... And Val got experience, but I don't think... Yeah, it didn't count the green sandstone. So that was an expensive adventure that didn't actually get what we needed. And of course, demise of... Landly and our reputation probably isn't going up much. We got some science. We got some science, but that's about it. Um, we can't upgrade the R&D building, but I'm just seeing we actually can't unlock everything yet with the science that we've got. Landing. We should probably get flight control just so we can get landing. I wanted to get landing for the heat shields in the hope that larger heat shields plus the salamander capsule will allow us to come back direct. To me, that's something we can test. We have some time before the Duna window, and I don't want to complete the Duna rally just yet. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll test the salamander pod, I think, to see if it can come back. We won't send Kerbals up. This will help us test our communication system as well. 
Uh, so we won't send Kerbals up. We will try to send it uncrewed. But we'll have a probe core as the core part. Uh, the Mark 1 lander cam might be a little bit more legitimate than the Hermes. It's actually heavier, so uh, we would be taking a hit on the actual performance. But maybe it's just, it's, I don't know. Do we, do we need to be legit about it? Hmm. Water launch system. That's a whole other thing, isn't it? But as far as radiation is concerned, is there any, like, tank we can put them into that could help them survive during a solar storm? A shower? Would, I mean, water absorbs radiation, so maybe... <laughs> I don't know. We need recyclers, for sure, but they might be further along. We can build some in, I know. We can have a water recycler built in. The greenhouse would be nice for long missions. So we might think about unlocking recycling for that. Okay, well, anyway, I don't see anything too pressing. We're probably going to want the life support. But let's see about the salamander pod. Let me see what I can cook up to send it like on a test around the moon. Okay, so here is our salamander test. We have the salamander pod from USI, and my hope is that its heat tolerance will be good enough so that it can return directly into Kerbin's atmosphere from uh, the moon or Minmus. And we've got the parachutes. I've got an empty Oscar B fuel. Oh, I've got fuel in it, sorry. I meant to have an empty Oscar B fuel tank up there. And the reason for that is just to give room for stuff. Especially the solar panels, which I want to recover, so I don't want to put them on the service module. I decided that we would recover them, and so I've got them up here, uh, so that, well, we can get them back again. We could have used smaller solar panels, of course, but this is safer. And we have a docking port, I've just put the whole thing into a fairing, and the service module has RCS thrusters and the ANT plus uh, spark engine combination that we had previously, on the previous mission. Uh, they are all uh, engine quality high, but I didn't want to put much on the service module that we couldn't recover, so a minimal amount there. And then on our rocket, we have just removed the upper stage uh, from the rocket that we used on the previous mission, so that makes it a little bit cheaper, but not a whole lot cheaper. It's still fairly expensive, so we're hoping to recover as much as possible. And if we take a look here, well, the salamander is about 10,000-ish. I took the heat shield off as well, but so we're not going to recover too much, but anyway, we have to do this test, I feel. So we'll try it. We have to try it without any Kerbals. And so we'll be testing that situation, and we're probably going to have to roll it back. We do have these antennae, biconical horn antennae, and they have plenty of range, and they are relays, in fact, as well. So they've got all sorts of benefits. They do not need to be extended so that, you know, we can use them in the atmosphere and everything. And, yep. So that's the idea. Let's uh, take it outside and see if we have a connection at all. I did put some goo containers on just in case we get to do those. Yeah, no comms. So what I'm going to do is we're going to try to change launch sites. And we didn't seem to get full value. I think we only got 37,000. It's like this isn't even our launch site. It's weird. Okay, so... Launchpad, Druid... I don't think the Druid stuff is going to help us, but... Arbor Water... That doesn't seem like it's a good place. I'm afraid it's going to end up in the water. Oh, this doesn't look good. And we don't have connection. Well... It is, in fact, in the water. I suppose they thought this was clever for, like, um, Sea Dragon or something. But, whatever. We don't have comms. Oh, we can scroll on this one. Oh, Darude Launchpad. Um, let's see, hold on a sec. It was this Valentina Tereshkova hex pad that actually had comms when we went over it. I still think it's, uh, it's some sort of conspiracy. Soviet conspiracy, obviously. 
we have comms here at this, this Valentina Tereshkova hex pad. So this is the situation. We've been infiltrated by Russians or Soviets or something. And we can only use the Valentina. God, they've got VABs up the wazoo, don't they? Um, well, I guess that's why they call it a hex pad, huh? Well, it's not really a hex. It's just uh, got a few hexes. But they've hexed us somehow. <laughs> uh, we have been hexed. I mean, it's a nice launch site and everything, but it wasn't where I wanted to launch from. It's not that far from the equator either. Oh, well, anyway, if you guys have some ideas, let, let me try. Having been here, let, let me try if we can... But every time I recover, it's costing me money, it seems. Let me see if uh, the recovery value is full in this case. No, it's still 37,000 only. So every time we're losing 3,000 funds. But now I'll sacrifice it. We gotta try the KSC launch pad one more time. Nope, no luck. So this is the peculiarity we have. We used to be able to launch at our launch site, but we can't launch at our launch site anymore. And I think it's because it's after we upgraded it. After we upgraded the VAB. This has happened. Oh, I just wanted to recover that, but... Okay, well, recover. So, we'll just have to deal with... Launching from... The only launch site that seems to work right now. Craft can be stored in this building for launching from the base at a later date. The building has limited space. I don't want to spend any money to open it. Okay, we just need to launch it this time. Okay, warp to sunrise. Okay. Alright, so we're going to the moon, folks. Throttle up, SAS on, and, uh, well, I, th I guess we should have spooled up last time, so spool up. And launch. Okay. We won't be perfectly equatorial, but it should be alright. We're already at 3,000 meters. Okay, booster is off. Oh, we've got plenty of Delta V here. I wonder what we even needed the upper stage for. I mean, this is already 10 tons up there. Hope it's not... I better have a decoupler and everything. Better not be drawing fuel. Doesn't seem to be. Fairings? Yeah, there's a little decoupler there. I just want to make sure we get it to orbit. Regardless of how lopsided the orbit is. Fine. Oh, this has a thrust tail off too. Somebody had mentioned that the engines have a thrust tail off, darn it. Uh, they have a longer thrust tail off than the realism overhaul ones, somehow. Um, but, okay. They want to be super realistic about it, I guess. Well, let's separate that stage. I guess I'll preserve the free return like this. There is another point over there that we can communicate to. Apparently Drew Helipad is working potentially. There's a green line there. We are a relay though, so... Well, we've got a comm line to the Kerbal Space Center. But we weren't able to launch from the Kerbal Space Center. So that's confusing. Is it being relayed? No, it's direct to the KSC, in fact. I don't know. So confusing. Maybe it'll work now, I don't know. But we are testing this now. Maybe now we have full comms. I mean, it looks like we have the regular comms now. Oh, well, we're through a relay right now, Gamma 3, but... Yeah, it's looking okay. Now. 
beats me. Of course, we do have a controller on here. That's the Octo this time. But as we saw bringing it out to the pad before, that didn't make any difference on launch. Well, here we go. Okay, we have completed that burn. And we have our pass though. No, it's not exactly the return I was looking for. One day, it's a short trip to the moon. You know, they might not get as irradiated going to the moon as they do going to Minmus. That was a sound. I think something blew up because... Yeah, one of the ant engines... One of the highly reliable ant engines blew up. I'll just shut down the opposite one. Ah, uh, well, I don't know how that happens, but okay. Anyway, now we've got the thing I was planning for. So we will continue over to the moon. This is basically a re-entry test, after all. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a high over Kerbin orbit. Um, whatchamacallit, goo. So, yeah, well, we're paused now, so we might as well try. Okay, mystery goo observation running. We have plenty of comms now. <laughs> I think we'll just accept the free return. Okay, let's bring the periapsis down. And we'll just go for... No, 30. 30 is fine. Okay. Well, we didn't even take a good look at the moon, but we're headed back. I will already arm the parachutes. Oh, these don't retract. Well, that's a problem. I really hate solar panels that don't retract. Oh well. Now off goes the service module. Oh, this uh, Octo does have hold retrograde. Let's do that. Surface retrograde in particular. Well, that'll save us from any weird angles, but it's not going to save the solar panels from conducting heat. Okay, we've got some heating. It's apparently on both the pod and the heat shield. And the pod exploded. And everything exploded. Okay. How, how do people do JNSQ here? I mean, that's a legit heat shield and everything. That's a normal trajectory to come back from a moon. I know. I've done a few. But there must be something going horribly wrong with my install for... And I've got the mod list in the video description. Um... For it to just blow up like this. <laughs> I mean, they don't require real heat. There's nothing that I know of that is meant to adjust the heat. There are the handlebars on the salamander. But I'm assuming that the handlebars are not... Don't have colliders. Yeah, otherwise it'd light up when I hover over them. So those things sticking out don't have anything. Alright, I've had enough of this weirdness. With this, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.